Our first lightning talk speaker is Caroline Caselli. She's the founder at Haven Connect. Hi, my name is Caroline Caselli, and, um, and I'm the founder of Haven Connect. And so right now, what I'm trying to do is hack the housing crisis by providing affordable, or provi providing TurboTax for affordable housing. Um, and so I'm going to give you a quick overview about why affordable housing applications need to be hacked, um, because most, most folks in tech, weirdly, don't know that much about affordable housing. Um, so I was a social worker for four years prior to this, and basically what happens is that uh, when clients are applying to affordable housing, you can't just fill a vacancy. You're actually applying to affordable housing and they're creating a wait list from all the applications that they receive. And so what generally happens is they'll get about 5,000 applications in two weeks, which is kind of intense for in terms of data entry because the property managers are actually going in and manually entering the data into an Excel document that they then lotterize and then put into their uh, property management system. So it, when they've, once they've done that, then you wait. You wait between two and 10 years to get to the top of that, uh, that wait list so you can then move into housing. And so, and, and every year what they do is they'll send out, they'll mail you a letter and they will, um, They'll mail you a letter to see if you're still interested in that wait list. And so when, when that happens, the most vulnerable clients are affected because if you are homeless and you move regularly and you apply to affordable housing, the likelihood of you uh, getting that piece of mail every year is, is low. And so unfortunately, th those most vulnerable uh, clients are the ones that are getting pulled off the wait list the most and they're the ones who need housing the most. The oldest waitlist applications tend to be the most valuable because the longer you've been on the waitlist, the, the higher likelihood that you're further up on the list. Um, and so this is not a trauma-informed system, right? So if, you, if you're a client and you have post-traumatic stress disorder and one of your symptoms is memory loss, that means, and you may not remember necessarily that you need to go in and update your uh, update your address with that with each particular property that you've applied to because you know of whatever memory issues you may have and so similarly there's no way to for social workers to use uh, the same set of client data and map that on to all the different applications that you're submitting and for clients there's no way to go online and then ad ad update your address across the entire system um, and what I learned was I started interviewing property managers and, uh, and social workers um, for the past few years, and I found out that mainly this is an issue because of funding, right? So every property has a, a mix of funding issues, and that funding might be for uh, a HOPWA unit, which means that those are for clients with HIV or AIDS, or you're for a 40% adjusted median income um, you know, person with that income. And so you have all these different requirements and layers for each unit. And so it's not actually possible to create a common application that will work across all different housing, uh, affordable housing, because basically every property has a different funding mix, which makes each application distinct. So basically it's a mess. <laughs> and, um, you know, and so what Haven Connect is trying to do is to allow each the property to create their own customized um, customized application based on a uh, like a, a data. A, we've created this data schema of all the different applications and all the different questions that come up most commonly. So that way, you can sort of plug and play, where you can pick all your questions and then create the application that's customized to your funding source. Um, and that's really different than a common application, right? Because you're still retaining the, that, that each uh, application is distinct. Um, and so, and then, so, and I also strongly believe that it's important to retain the paper application because for those clients that aren't digitally savvy or who, 
um, may not have a social worker to help them apply, they still need a paper application. And so what we're doing is we're uh, using optical character recognition to digitize those paper applications and integrate them with the online applications. Um, and so this is our online application. Um, and I tried to make it um, as, as it, it customizable, but also as culturally sensitive as possible. So one thing that we did, because most applications are laden with assumptions, right? They ask male or female, they don't ask tr if, if someone is trans. And if, if they are trans, what pronouns do they prefer? Um, we assume you know, current address is one thing, but then sometimes people need mailing addresses because they're actually staying with family or friends or in a transitional housing situation, and they need a mailing address that will then go to their P.O. box. Um, similarly, with, um, with income information, you're going to have things like em employment income isn't necessarily something that's relevant to everyone, and so allowing folks to pick, oh, no, I have an other income, and ignoring the, the employment income direct, um, you know, if they don't have a job. So that way, they can customize the application to their specification. So, um, so yeah, that's what we're doing at Haven Connect. Do, you have any, do I have any questions? Questions for Caroline? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Caroline. Thanks. <laughs>